Today, I'm gonna to talk about the three things you should know about McLaren's extended warranty program. Leviathan here, as supercars are becoming more practical to drive, they're also becoming more practical to maintain. In fact, when you buy a Ferrari, Lamborghini, or McLaren, you get a three-year factory warranty. But what happens when this warranty expires? With McLaren, you have the option to extend the warranty by up to 12 years. However, this is not an extension of the original factory warranty, but an extremely limited version of it. Number one, the price. In North America, it's approximately $4,500 for one year of extended warranty. The key point here is approximately because this varies drastically and dealerships actually have a lot of discretion when it comes to what the price should be. So essentially, you can buy the exact same product with the exact same coverage at two very different prices depending on the dealership. I've done my research and prices range from as low as $3,500 to as high as $7,000. That's a 100% markup. And to me, these prices should really be standardized across all dealerships. There's no point having to call and negotiate to get the exact same coverage. Number two, track days. To really experience the full potential of a McLaren legally, you have to drive it on the track which is fine under the original factory warranty, but under the extended warranty, driving it on a track will void your warranty. Did you get that? Void your warranty. Unless, of course, it's a McLaren-sponsored event, then you can take it on the track without voiding your warranty. But any other reason the car is on the track, whether you're racing or not, will void your warranty, which to me goes against the entire spirit of what these cars are about. This is a supercar. This is a performance machine that needs to be taken to a track and it will void your warranty if you do so. Number three, parts. McLaren will only replace the part if it fails. So if it's degraded or operating poorly, it's not gonna be subject for replacement. But what's worse is let's just assume that this part does fail. McLaren also has an undisclosed list of parts that are not eligible under the extended warranty. And you have no way of knowing how long this list is since it's undisclosed. And what's worse than that is any labor associated with this part is also not covered under the extended warranty. So you'd be liable for both the part as well as the labor associated with it. And even software upgrades are not included in the extended warranty. So what does this all mean? Well, the factory warranty on the McLaren has now expired and I decided to opt for the extended warranty despite all of its limitations because in the past year, this car has gone through approximately $50,000 worth of repair all covered under warranty. The reason I'm expressing my opinion is because McLaren has had a history of listening to their customers and I would like to see McLaren enhance their policies to create one standardization of prices and an enhancement of their underwriting policies to provide owners a bit more coverage closer to that of the factory warranty. When you first read the extended services warranty, you feel that reassurance as everything is covered. However, until you actually read the detailed terms and conditions, do you really understand what the limitations of it are? Well, I hope you enjoyed that and learned something new. Until next time. <laughs>